Ladies and gentlemen, here is the show everybody has been waiting for, The Gadget Professor. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the professor himself, Don Bain. Hello everyone and welcome to The Gadget Professor. I am The Gadget Professor and my name is Don Bain. I'd like to welcome everyone to our third episode of The Gadget Professor. And if you want to get every episode of The Gadget Professor, you will go to the gadgetprofessor.com. On the right-hand side of the screen, you will see a little note that says The Gadget Professor. You will click on The Gadget Professor and you will be subscribed. By subscribing, you will make sure that you get every episode, which comes out every Thursday evening. And you will have the show notes sent to you automatically. So as we refer to things on the websites, you'll be able to... Uh, look up more information and you will also get the show automatically in your uh, uh, on your iPod or Zoom whatever it may be every Thursday evening. You can also email me any questions any suggestions at the gadget professor at gmail.com I welcome your suggestions if you have a favorite gadget let the gadget professor know because I will be happy to uh, review that gadget. We are also pleased to say that we are a very proud member of the Geek News Central uh, podcast network with Todd Cochran. If you don't tune into Todd's show, uh, I would highly recommend that you do that. Todd has two shows a week and also one on Saturday. So again, the Geek News Central with uh, Todd Cochran. We highly recommend that. Today what we're going to do is take a look at a very interesting gadget and uh, that would be called the Slingbox HD. So stay tuned and uh, very shortly we're going to take an in-depth look at the Slingbox HD. Right now what we're going to do is uh, go to some gadget news and the first device that we have up is put out by a company called ThinkFlood and ThinkFlood is located in Waltham, Massachusetts. Where they got the name I do not know. It doesn't flood that much in Waltham or at all that I'm aware of so uh, your guess is as good as mine when it comes to why they call the company ThinkFlood. What they have is a device called a Red Eye Controller and what this device does is it actually uh, will remotely operate your TV or anything in your home entertainment center uh, via your iPod. There's a nice little video on the website and uh, it works uh, infrared. They also have a very cool model called the Red Eye Pro. Uh, the Red Eye Pro will operate any device in your home that uh, you hook up to one of their controllers. So. Uh, your security systems, your home lighting, your HVAC, your pumps, your sprinklers, uh, almost any device that you could think of can be controlled uh, using these red eye controllers. Here they show a rack which I think is very scary to the uh, general public so obviously with this device you'll need a professional installer. If you don't want to go that route you can just go with the uh, red eye itself. That sells for $199 and uh, Everyone can use their smartphone, your tablet, uh, your PC as a controller to control one or more uh, pieces of equipment in your house. And there's a nice little video on that web page that uh, gives you more detail. So again, that's called the Red Eye. Another device that uh, came out this week that I just love and I'm very excited about is the Nikon D5100. This camera is a real killer. Uh, the price. 899 is fantastic and what this does is uh, quite unique. It has, if you look on the website, a LCD panel that pops out and uh, you can actually move that in uh, pretty much any direction. So as you're shooting uh, photographs, you can actually manipulate that uh, head uh, for your comfort and eye, uh, eye level, whatever is comfortable to you. The other thing that's neat about it is this will shoot full, obviously, HD uh, 1080p and by moving that head around you can hold the camera high, low, whatever and keep that flap, that LCD flap panel out so that you can watch it as you're actually uh, videotaping uh, whatever it is that you are uh, videotaping. The other thing that's quite unique about this is it has an external microphone jack and I believe it's a stereo microphone. You can actually buy the uh, apparatus from Nikon and that will actually mount on the hot shoe. So what happens is you're going to get high quality audio via a microphone instead of that built-in microphone within the cameras that uh, your cheaper models have which gives you horrible audio. Now you'll be able to jack in an actual mic 
and uh, have that synchronized with all your sound uh, and movies from the uh, uh, camera. The camera is just available, I believe. Its price, as I said, is $8.99. If you Google it, you may be able to uh, get it a little bit cheaper, but I doubt it. It will probably take a month or two before the price gets lower. I love Nikon. I myself use a Nikon uh, D90 camera and uh, I'm very happy with that. The D90 is a phenomenal piece of machinery. This D5100 is significantly cheaper and it does a lot of the high-end things. Uh, for example, it does uh, HDR. If you're into HDR photography, which I myself love, very soon I'm going to do a whole episode on, uh, on uh, HDR, but this camera will allow you to shoot uh, multiple uh, exposures just by one click. It will shoot three or six exposures, whatever it is that you want if you're shooting uh, HDR, which, as I said, I, I do love. Another device that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about next show would be the GoPro camera. Uh, I have a GoPro camera. We'll do a whole show on that next week. This device is a little crazy, almost a little corny to me. Uh, it's the 3D Hero system. And uh, it's interesting how they, how they advertise this. They show two cameras side by side, and that's actually what it is, two cameras side by side. But if you read a little bit, uh, uh, it looks like you get both the cameras for a price of $99. That is not the case. Uh, what you're buying for the 3D system is a case for $99. Actually, it's two cases that are joined together, as you can see in the picture. That does not include the price of the HD cameras. The cheapest HD camera that you can buy from GoPro is 180 bucks. Now you need two of them. I would probably recommend the uh, uh, HD Hero Naked, which is the camera we will review, I believe, on the next uh, Gadget Professor program. But uh, those cameras sell for, uh, uh, let's see here, 260 So you'll be spending $260 times two to get this 3D Hero system to work. But uh, it's an interesting uh, unit. I have not tried the 3D yet, but uh, I thought I would call it to your attention if you do a lot of sporting activities or uh, like some wild video footage. Uh, the uh, Hero system, the GoPro system is kind of neat. And uh, during the next episode, I actually have videotape HD of the hike that the Gadget Professor was on last week. And uh, I did bring the uh, HD Pro camera with me and I got a lot of crazy looks. I'll show you how, uh, how I mounted it. And uh, you want to catch that episode for sure because uh, we have some, uh, some very unique footage, let's say, of, uh, of the Gadget Professor's hike. So without further ado, I think we're going to get right into the uh, main device that we're going to uh, review today. And that, of course, is the Slingbox, the HD Slingbox, which I will show you how to hook up. And I have that right in front of me. And we're going to swing by right now to the uh, uh, website. And uh, we'll just shut that down, and we're going to go live right now. We'll have that website ready to take a look at. We're going to go live to the actual HD box, which is right here. The Sling HD box sells for $299. And uh, on the back of it, which is what we're looking at, there are a lot of connections. Don't let that intimidate you. We're going to go through those. It's quite simple. Uh, over here we have a, a red jack. This is the power supply. This goes back to a small power pack, simple enough. This is your internet connection. The sling box will not work if you don't have it hooked up to the internet. And uh, over here we have a variety of input jacks. This is an important jack. This one is the cable TV feed that I have. This just goes back to my wall outlet. We have a loop through here that will actually loop the signal. So if you want to go to your box, to your actual uh, uh, satellite box or your cable TV box you just loop through. These are various channels of inputs. You can use the uh, video S connector, uh, RGB, uh, red, green, blue, or composite. Four different channels on the HD box. Now you might ask yourself what do I do? What is this sling box for? What's its purpose in life? Its purpose in life is for remote viewing and for those of you who know the other type of remote viewing, it's not that type, and we'll get into that someday. That's a little esoteric for the Gadget Professor's show right now. But uh, remote viewing basically means you can hook up your sling box in your home, in your office, and when you travel, you can watch television, whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you've put into the sling box for an input, and we'll show you that in a minute. You can watch it on your cell phone, 
or you can watch it on any laptop or computer as long as you have an internet connection. And uh, it's a very interesting device. The one I'm showing you is the HD, and the way you, you actually get into the device is by going logging on to the uh, website, which is slingbox.com, putting in your username and password, and uh, I actually have the Slingbox up right now. I am going to change the channel here, and there is a very user-friendly interface that comes automatically when you log into the website. Uh, basically, you're going to go to the Watch menu, click Watch. It will ask you for your username and password. Once you put that in, it will actually connect to your Slingbox, and there's a key here that says remote, and if you click the remote, you actually bring up a remote controller, which you may not be able to see on your screen, but on mine you can, and it will actually bring up the remote control, and from that you can change channels remotely on your laptop or from your iPhone. Right now I will bring this up full screen, which is just a button click on the menu, and over here now, I'm on full screen mode, you can actually see the tuner, the remote tuner. So I can be at work or traveling in my hotel room, wherever it may be, and I can actually watch the local TV from the streaming sling box. Here you have an up and down button, so if I click that button up, it will actually change the channels. Uh, moving it up, I'll go to the next channel. Uh, right now I'm going to be on channel 4, and this is Arizona TV, so uh, they happen to be watching the Rangers and the Mariners and I can just keep clicking all day long and whatever is on the channel menu back at home will be uh, seen here on the sling box. Uh, if you tune in high def you're going to get a much better picture uh, than if you were not to have a high def station. You might be seeing some color uh, changing, color shifting uh, on the actual podcast. Uh, that is not a function of the sling box that is actually a function of the long wire that I'm using for this demonstration to hook into the uh, into the wall but uh, there is no color shift whatsoever uh, in actual production so uh, as you can see uh, I'm shifting through the channels here and uh, it works uh, it works quite well there is no uh, differential in the synchronization between uh, the uh, audio and video that that comes through fine uh, I have no no issues with that at all. Uh, I'm going to click the escape key. Uh, also on the uh, menu that you have when you dial into Slingbox, you will find a guide that will come up. And the guide is just like any other TV guide. It will show you what the channels are. And you can select whatever you want. So uh, if I wanted to watch the news at 5, I would just click that. I will say tune to that channel now. and. Uh, shrink the menu down again and boom there you are just click the button for full frame and there we are once again full frame and you have the ability to adjust widescreen or a 4x3 format uh, on the menu uh, full control if you will so the sling box works quite well on the front of the sling box there are two lights uh, one red light that shows you if the unit's on obviously it would light red there's another uh, small light next to that, to the left of that, a small neon light. That also lights red to show that it's actually streaming on the internet. And then it has a, uh, a nice end button that shows that uh, it's actually working. So I'm going to try to get a close-up of the end light that lights up now. So I'm going to actually turn the sling box around. And uh, there's that end, and you'll see that kind of shows that it's actually streaming for you. And uh, over there on the screen, you can see the on and off light and also the other red light that indicates that it is on network and streaming. So that end button uh, basically shows that it's on the network and it is streaming and that, uh, that kind of glows and, and moves so that you know that it's there. Certainly, if you're, if you're away, you're not going to know whether that light is on or not. So you basically uh, hook into the sling box whatever devices it is that you want to watch. So on this particular demo, I just have the cable TV plugged into the uh, sling box. Uh, I can watch whatever channel I want remotely, and it will not disturb what people are watching at home. The sling box 
HD is the only unit that has a built-in digital tuner inside of it. So if you hook up an antenna from your rooftop or wherever you hook your digital antenna to and you bring the F connector directly into the sling box, you don't need cable TV in your home if you're comfortable and uh, it's sufficient to watch what's free, what's open air uh, on the digital antenna, the sling box through its own digital tuner will work for you. Uh, I had some trouble getting it work because the signal wasn't strong, so you probably will need a RF amplifier, uh, a digital amplifier to amplify the signal from your digital antenna into the sling box to make that signal strong so that the tuner inside the uh, sling box can actually detect a signal. So it's a great device for watching television remotely. You can, as I said, watch digital uh, TV from the digital antenna. Your cable TV will work. I can hook in my VCR, uh, a different type of a string box, a boxy box, a satellite uh, dish tuner can go in there. You have four inputs and also on the interface, uh, on the sling box interface uh, on the computer, the menu lets you select channel one, which could be your cable TV, channel two, which could be your boxy box channel 3 which could be a, a DVD you have four inputs and they all will be plugged in and you have your choice to simultaneously run and control each one of those devices on the back of the unit uh, I could take another quick look back there I will show you one little jack that's very small and if we look over here uh, it's right here this is an IR port that's a uh, very important uh, jack to have because uh, when you buy your sling box, it comes with four uh, IR connectors. So you would plug one in there and then you'd spread out the other four and that learns how your remote controls work. So when you're away, if you want to fast forward the DVD or slow it down or pause it, you actually have total remote control of those devices. And the way that's done is the device uh, is actually uh, controlled through the sling box through an IR port, which, uh, which is the jack that I just showed you. So. It sells for $299. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 5, the Gadget Professor rates the Slingbox HD at about 4. Uh, the only issue that I had uh, was with their free tech support. Uh, if you plug the Slingbox, uh, when you hook it up directly into your router, you probably won't have any issues. It will work almost immediately for you. If you, like the Gadget Professor has, a router with switches and uh, wires all over the place, uh, you will have problems and you will have to port forward. Port forwarding becomes a little complex, uh, certainly if you're not uh, uh, aware of a basic IT structure, you will have some issues port forwarding. The tech support people at uh, the Slingbox uh, company were not uh, forthcoming in how to uh, uh, port forward. I knew that I had a port forward, but they pretty much didn't want to go there. I can understand why, and they got a little bit grumpy and said that uh, there's nothing wrong with the sling box. I have to contact my IT people. Well, uh, you're not going to have an IT person that's going to show you how to, how to port forward, and perhaps uh, if there's interest, we can do a, uh, a whole show on port forwarding because that's an important topic, and a lot of the devices that we will be reviewing will require port forwarding. So that said, the sling box works really well. I have no major complaints. You do not receive high def. Even though it says high def, it takes the high def signal in. By the time it gets to you on your laptop or on your, on your cell phone, your smartphone, the signal is definitely not high def. But it's certainly usable. The sound is good. The picture quality is good. Uh, the picture quality is at its best when you're tuning in or receiving uh, high def signals. But uh, for the most part, it works really well, and uh, I like the box. And uh, if you travel a lot and you want to watch the local news or a local ball game, uh, I highly recommend the sling box. And uh, we have one more crazy device here today, and uh, this is it. And you're probably saying, oh, no, the gadget professor's lost his head. He's going to review a flashlight. Well, this is a flashlight, but uh, it's a special kind of flashlight. And as you can see from the glow there, that's not your normal light. Uh, what I call this is the Arizona flashlight, and uh, anybody know what that is? No? Well, I'll tell you. We're going to take a look at a website here, and uh, what this device is, is it's an ultraviolet flashlight, and uh, they're quite common in this area of the woods. Uh, you use it to detect scorpions, and uh, if we take a look at this website, uh, this is a scorpion that is actually... Uh, uh, underneath the, uh, the UV light, and uh, that's one of the best ways to detect them. So at night when you come home from shopping and uh, 
some of your lights are out in the kitchen or whatever, uh, you'll definitely want to uh, have one of these with you uh, so you can shine it on the floor or on the walls and uh, you'll actually see these little suckers. Uh, they have a very, very, very nasty sting. My mother, unfortunately, uh, stepped on one last week and ended up in the hospital. This won't kill you, but it, it's very painful. She was fine. And uh, if we had the, uh, the uh, Arizona flashlight, we would, have seen, uh, we would have seen the scorpion. She has one now. And uh, it's an interesting device. Uh, they make all sizes of scorpion flashlights, uh, ranging anywhere from $10. Uh, if you want the big one, it's $27. And uh, I always have one with me, uh, and every good Arizonian will have a, uh, will have a, a flashlight with them. And uh, you can actually get these at CVS. Almost every store out here has the, uh, the uh, ultraviolet light Arizona flashlight. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's a lot of fun, especially if uh, you're not stepping on one. You want to know where those little suckers are. So uh, we use those flashlights all the time. So that will wrap it up for the uh, Gadget Professor today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Again, please feel free to email me anytime at uh, thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. I certainly welcome your comments and suggestions. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the show. The, can, that can be done at uh, dialing up very easily, thegadgetprofessor.com, hitting the su subscribe button, and you will certainly get the show notes and uh, never miss an episode of The Gadget Professor. So until next week, so long from The Gadget Professor.